Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Tasmanians have a very special connection to their waterways and we're prolific campers and fishers and swimmers and we cherish the island and its incredible coastlines and rivers. Of course, the Palawa people lived sustainably from the bounty of the sea long before Europeans were even aware that Lutuita existed. People living in coastal communities around the state or visiting their favourite beaches are highly attuned to their place. We notice the smallest changes, the shifting sandbars and the erosion of a, of a favourite fishing spot. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the gradual increase uh, in heavy-duty ropes and black plastic piping that's being washed up onto shorelines around the state have not gone unnoticed by locals. But it was the stinking mass of filamentous algae in Long Bay in, on the Tasman Peninsula in December last year that wouldn't have been missed by anybody. Uh, the Peninsula residents were expected uh, to suffer the idea that the massive expansion of Tassel's fish farm operations into Long Bay had nothing to do with the green slime that was uh, choking the seagrass there. But anyone who saw Long Bay beforehand um, understands that the 150 tonnes of dissolved nitrogen approximately from the nearby fish farm operation clearly was the cause. Mr Deputy Speaker, the fact is Tasmanians know what's going on and they're seeing step changes in marine ecosystems around beaches uh, that are being spoiled and, we're, and they're watching waterways being emptied of fish. They know something is very, very wrong. And the most recent evidence was a tremendous mat of filamentous algae that washed up on the incredibly popular and beautiful white beach near Nubina on the peninsula. Uh, a resident called my office. Um, she was gobsmacked and emotional, Mr Deputy Se Speaker, at the site. And residents have never seen the level of algae on White Beach. It had, has always been a pristine white sand coastline. Uh, so it does beg a belief that the nutrient load from uh, the local Tassel farm operation that was rec recently established what is not obviously a, the cause, if not a, a, a major contributor, if not the total cause. Uh, we wrote to the EPA um, and we're not satisfied with the answers that were provided. Um, they were vague, they were non-specific, um, they were limp <coughs> and they were essentially unconcerned um, and had no sub substance in their um, ability or, or preparedness to do anything concrete to either investigate or to, um, to make sure that this situation doesn't happen again. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the community are not going to take this sort of rubbish lying down. Um, they're sick of the paper shuffling waffle and um, the inaction when damage occurs like this. It's the outright rubber stamping by the government of industry expansion and self-monitoring of impacts on the environment that is making people sick. They're seeing the changes in their coastlines and waterways that they love are getting worse and they're not going to put up with it any longer. This week, the Bruni Island uh, Kilora Community Association joined with the Tasmanian Alliance for Marine Protection. They're calling for fish farm operations to leave the North Dontracasto Channel off Bruni Island. It's the constant noise and lights which has turned this peaceful area into an industrial farming la uh, wastewater landscape. They can't do it any longer, Mr Deputy Speaker. The community were never consulted about the appropriateness of that site. The flourishing, fish-rich marine channel was changed from public to private at the stroke of a pen, and they were never asked. Bruni locals are, are gravely concerned that the North Dontracasto Channel has been fundamentally damaged by large-scale fish farming. The shallow waters uh, of the, uh, and the weak currents just can't flush out the immense amount of fish waste that's going into the area. So gone are the flatheads, Mr Deputy Speaker. Gone are the scallops. And instead, there is algae and there is jellyfish. The North Dontracasto Channel ecological collapse is not a one-off occurrence. The disaster of Macquarie Harbour should have been warning enough. 
uh, about the woeful state of our regulation and uh, planning framework. It should be protecting marine life from the impacts of fish farming, but instead it is entirely toothless. Currently, the industry can effectively pick and choose where they want to farm, and the functioning, so-called, of the Marine Farming Planning Review Panel process was axed by the Labor Party and now is ultimately dictated to by the Minister of the Day. And we saw that process play out during the Storm Bay assessment. Uh, the EPA don't have any say over where fish pens are located, and this means that the Marine Farming Review Panel is the only body able to conduct an environmental assessment before a lease is established. That was the panel, which had two independent experts, expert scientists, during the Storm Bay assessment, um, resign from the panel because the process, they said, was, quote, inherently compromised. So I'm not surprised that communities around Tasman Peninsula and Bruny Island have lost face, faith in working with the industry and the government to sort out fish farm impacts. And good on them, Mr Deputy Speaker, for standing up and coming out and making a stand. More people will come out and join them, I'm very confident. Until we completely rework the laws that govern the industry and put the emphasis back on the community to have a say and on scientists to regulate for the protection of the environment, we won't have a sustainable industry and we will have increasing loss of marine diversity.